Uh, hello, everybody. I thank you for your attendance. I would like everyone to see. Sit down, please. And it's a pleasure to have a lot of people. Uh, I just want to make a few announcements before we start. Uh, this is a joint meeting by uh, support by the uh, Industrial Electronics Society, IES, and also the Power Electronics Society. Okay? So it was possible to bring Professor Bose, who is a distinguished lecturer of Technical Belief. Uh, in addition, we also had support from our college, thanks to Kevin Moore, our department, thanks to that. And so those are my thank you for everyone. Thanks for you. And I do not want to, to keep talking here because we have important business. I'd like to invite Professor Moore after me. I just want you to please sign. Uh, we have a, a, an attendance list. Please, please sign. Indicate if you are a TPOE member, IES member, or PELS member because we are going to use that in our reports. So, Kevin Moore. Um, thank you, Marcelo, and uh, I'd like to just uh, quickly welcome everyone here. Um, I see a lot of faces maybe from off campus, and I'd like to say a couple of remarks. Uh, yeah. I like the title, Energy, Environment, and Power Electronics. Uh, many of you that have traveled to the airport or spent time on campus, you see the signs that talk about Colorado School of Mines, Earth, Energy, Environment. And, and certainly these are um, big niche areas for us. I like to tell that um, at Mines, uh, part of our mission expansion it was one reason I came to this school was said that Mines is interested in the, um, the discovery and recovery of resources, the conversion of those resources to materials and energy, the use of materials and energy in product processes and systems, and then the economic and prudent use of all those resources for a sustainable global society. And I'd like to say that that's actually a really true thing in mind. This whole chain that I described is something we care about a lot. And as part of that chain, that prudent, provident use of resources, uh, it, it's really um, an important part of how we can manage and control the energy that our society needs and uses. And these are things we study here at Mines. And at the point where we we're starting to throw switches and trying to have electricity, we, we begin to enter at least the backside of the power electronics, which is very important for switching energy um, from its different um, sources uh, and forms uh, into things that are usable for us. And so I'm very happy to see this lecture today with our distinguished speaker. And so, um, Welcome, thank you for coming, and with no further ado, I'll introduce the president of the School of Mines who will introduce the speech. <laughs> At no. some point, we'll actually get to the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> we will, and, and of course, I've done this poorly because I just said he's the president. It's President Paul Johnson of the Paul School of Mines. That's the, the, what's important is we have a speaker today, which is, which is really, really good, and uh, I'm pleased to have been invited uh, to be able to give the introduction. To our speaker today, uh, I've, I've been doing research on you, so I, 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 did, I didn't use the standard bio. I went back and uh, looked in it. So, so we've got someone here who has, actually has a Wikipedia page, which is like this. He has, a, he has a short bio, short bio that's actually probably longer than my whole CV because it lists everything that um, he's done, which is amazing. But um, give you the coordinates. So the, the academics always love the coordinates uh, of, of where things are and so I think. But Dr. Bose is an innovative educator and mentor to many members of industry all over the world. He's been a reference for many engineers and scientists working in the area of power electronics and motor drives and has contributed to the global promotion of power electronics by his many books, publications, patents, tutorials, invited seminars, and keynote speeches around the world. Seven, tech, seven books and thousands of papers and all those kinds of things in there. He, Started his career in India in the 1960s, emigrated to the U.S. in the early 70s, where he was uh, joined RPI. From there, he uh, worked his way over to GE Corporate Research and Development in Schenectady, New York, as a research engineer. And then from there, he popped back to academia, uh, where he joined the University of Tennessee and held the Condor Chair of Excellence in Power Electronics, and also organized their teaching and research program in that, in that area. 
Um, you know somebody's really important when IEEE IES Magazine publishes a special issue um, devoted just to them. And in June 2009, there was an issue titled Honoring Dr. Bimelbos and Celebrating His Contributions to Power Electronics. Also, you know you're important if, and done something pretty good, and people must like you if, if there's an award in your honor. And um, IEEE IES introduced the annual um, Bose Energy Systems Award to recognize an individual who's a young researcher with outstanding contributions to the field of industrial electronics applied to power electronics and energy systems. Um, so those were all interesting things. What I found interesting was you can find some of your writings on the internet and some of your reflections on um, sort of your, your life in a bit. And I just want to read a paragraph from one of those that I thought was, was kind of interesting. So um, coming from a remote village of Bangladesh, which was then part of India, being born into a large poor family, it was my dream to see the whole world with my own eyes and make important contributions to the world. I had to overcome mountainous hurdles step by step to fulfill the ambitious goals in life and reach where I am today. Although my goals are yet unfulfilled, I often feel that I am the happiest person on earth. Achieving the goals of life requires persistent ambition, courage, and hard work, but when you reach the top of the Himalayan mountain, the mind remains filled with perennial pleasures. Do we have any young engineers in here? Yes, I know. <laughs> my, my advice to young engineers, have, have a dream in life and try to realize that dream with hard work. Have a long-term ambition and short-term career goals with the fire always burning in your mind. And uh, the one other quote that I really liked in there. Pursuit of a successful career, in my opinion, is nothing but a sustained transcendental meditation. Uh, that, that one I'm going to think on. We've we got to do like meditation around here now, I think. <laughs> to ensure we all have successful careers here in months. But um, with that, it's, it's uh, my great honor and we're very fortunate to have with us today, Dr. Bose. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Moon. And thank you, Dr. Um, Johnson. Uh, this is the best introduction I ever got in my career <laughs> <laughs> meeting, so I'm very overwhelmed uh, by giving me so much honor for me. Okay, uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Marcelo Simos for inviting me for the seminar. I must tell in the beginning that uh, Marcelo was an outstanding student, the best uh, in my lab, and uh, his research contribution brought a lot of good name for me. In, in fact, in my book, if you are reading, you will see a lot of his contribution there. So I'm really proud of him. Okay, uh, with these words, now let me go to the subject proper. And you can see my subject is energy, environment, and power electronics. I'll be talking about this subject in a very broad perspective. No equations, no mathematics, nothing. Just a very broad kind of perspective kind of things and all. Now, everybody is talking about the energy nowadays. Energy is so vital uh, in our daily life, in our society. And uh, so energy is so very important uh, in our life. And uh, in my presentation today, what I will do is that uh, in the beginning, I will give you some kind of historical evolutions about, um, about um, different types of um, stages of the type of life, stage of life. And then I'll talk about the environmental pollutions by the fossil fuels. I'll talk about the consequences of that. i talk about the global warming and uh, climate change problems. And I'll talk how to get remedy, how to get remedy out of this. And uh, possibly uh, many of you are familiar with this already. And uh, I'll talk about, uh, uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, how to get remedy. And then I'll fall into the power electronics problem. Uh, how power electronics can help solving the problems. That is the main objective of my talk here. And while talking about that, I will talk about different energy scenarios, different types of renewable energy, the kind of very uh, easy going and uh, plain fashions. And uh, then I will talk about the technology developments, technology development of power electronics that is very helping us in all these applications. And then finally, the kind of, kind of conclusions and all. Okay. Uh, Okay, so let me first in the beginning 
and go to evolution of industrial civilizations for a long time, starting from the muscle age, uh, the age of uh, muscles, animal or human muscles, then the age of electric machines, then the electrical age of electricity age, and then finally the uh -huh. electronics age. Now, if you follow this right in the beginning, I'm saying prior to 1785, we call the age muscle age, age of muscles, animal and human muscles. And in those days, the world population was small, our lifestyle was very simple, and environment was a little bit clean at that time, so, so no such problems at that time. Then came the age of machines, or called industrial revolutions, by James Watt. James Watt invented the steam engine, and then that steam engine gradually uh, brought the machines for us. And it's a kind of industrial revolution we call. Then in the early 19th century came the IC engines, or heat engines, that essentially gave further momentum on that. So that I call starting from 1785 to 1888. So this started uh, in the Scotland, you know, Scotland. Then we came to wave of that industrial revolution came to the United States, and then came to the rest of the world. Yeah. Then starting on 1888, uh, started the electrical electrical revolutions, or we call the age of Tesla and the Edisons. Now, Tesla invented the induction motors, commercial induction motors, and around at the same time, commercial electricity was developed. So that started what you call the electrical revolution, electrical age. And then from that time, they became electronics revolutions, or Soviet state electronic revolution, then came by the invention of transistors, by Bardeen, Bratton, and Shockley, and Bell Lab, we already know that. And then around 1956, thyristor, or we call the, in the beginning it was called the ENPA transistor, was invented in the same lab. And 1958, commercial thyristors were available. So that was solid state electronics, solid state power electron, we call. And often we say that brought what we call the solid state power electrons revolution, and the second electronic revolution, we call that. Well, starting from that time, a lot of things have happened. We call the age of solid state power electronics. Then came the integrative circuit, computer, communication, robotics, and now we call we are in internet age. With a new kind of revolution in communications. The whole world is shrank into a small size, and this is a called internet age, tremendous amount of revolutions in communications. Now during all these ages, mechanical age, electrical age, and electronic age, the world population was gradually increasing, and was style of living, standard of living was improving. So as a result, our consumption of energy started growing. We never thought at that time, during these ages, about the environmental problems of the energy consumption, which is being so dominant nowadays, the adverse effect of that, so that I will essentially spend a lot of time on that. While this figure shows the environmental pollution by fossil fuels, <coughs> in the world, typically about 80% of our energy comes from the fossil fuels. And fossil fuels, you call coal, oil, and natural gas. In the United States, I think around 83%. <coughs> United States, we have a population around 6% of the world population, but we consume 20% of the world energy. We, our power capita consumption is the highest in the world. But our living standard is not highest now. We said that Switzerland is the best living standard with a lot less energy consumption, and of course their energy, most of the energy does not come from fossil fuels. <coughs> now anyway, as you know, the burning of the fossil fuels, the coal, oil, and natural gas produces environmental pollutions. And these are the gases, sulfur dioxide, CO, NOx, HC, and CO2. And CO2, we are now bothering a lot with the CO2 emissions, that is tremendously harmful in our society, I'm going to talk about that. Now, some of these gases cause the acid rain. Some of these gases, SO2, SO2, HCH, and the So what happens is that these gases are only coming from the power plants, and they mix 